Alrighty, welcome, and here we are right off the bat. We're going to go into Cleveland and Detroit here in another game in May. Shane Bieber uh, starting for the Guardians here against Detroit. Uh, Spencer Turnbull on the other side for Detroit. Cleveland, I believe, did win the last game they played on Monday. That was the second game of their series. It's a really close game right now so far. Uh, there's Cleveland getting a run on Turnbull, and there's a, uh, there's uh, the Tigers getting a run. On him, and then there comes the bullpen coming in, and Bieber. I guess he, we're gonna keep him one more inning. Uh, I think that's it for him. We're not going to take the chance on. I mean, the bullpen can always blow it, but we're gonna give it to someone else here. Uh, Karen check Matthew Boy on the other side, and there's Cleveland taking the lead. So this is where uh, Emmanuel Class A will step in and hopefully get the save for the Guardians. We're gonna jump into this. Uh, that's the rule that we have here. Usually, when it's a one-run game or a two-run game in the ninth, we come in, watch it, take a look at it, see what's going on. Um, unless it's a game that could possibly go to extra innings like that. Detroit rocking some old school jerseys tonight. Uh, Guardians saying, ah, we're going to wear our, our regular whites here. We're good. We're going to wear these uh, these jerseys. Uh, the Emmanuel Class A is coming out for the save. Did he come out? Yeah, he came out last night. He was one of the, uh, from the last video that we had, we didn't have much, uh, much action. This is one of the, I think, closer games that we did have uh, on Monday. Every single team, I think, does play today. On Monday, there were a couple teams off. Um, and here comes the first out on Kerry Carpenter. And I think last night he was at a, uh, he was a triple away or a double away from a cycle. Like, I can't remember. Again, 30 teams, a lot of information that I have to remember. Then sometimes I'm not very good at remembering information because I'm pretty bad at that. Uh, Austin Meadows there at 6 now as he uh, has 0 for 2 in this game. He's 1 for 6 in the series. I'm not ex confidence. For his squad. Uh, in May, I'm taking a little bit more lax on making call-ups and send-downs. I'm going to take a, a month here to let's see how these teams progress and see how these teams go. Um, and uh, the Troy, I'm just letting them play out right now. Because they do have prospects. They do have players in the minors that could be getting better. But I want them to play in the minors a little bit more for a month and see how they do. And I want to see how some of these guys in the majors do. I mean, Austin Meadows, uh, a guy I was a little high on, I think. It was a little high on him, thinking, okay, maybe there's a chance he can he can get uh, get some things going. But so far, it hasn't been it hasn't been what I, I thought he would be doing. I mean, I knew Detroit wouldn't do much here. I knew Detroit wasn't going to be a uh, playoff squad. I mean, they're at five, like a team that's chasing 500, and that's a walk there for Austin Meadows. Every time I talk about somebody, they always prove me wrong. I like it. I like it. That's how I inspire teams. Uh, Jonathan uh, Scoop who's 0 for 4. He started off the season really well, so I'm. Thinking maybe a trade value, trade asset in case the Tigers aren't there. Um, make it a playoff hunt. But three for six uh, versus Class A. He's batting 500 against them, so he he's not terrible. He's not he's not thrown off too much by uh, by Emmanuel Class A. And Class A's got that runner right now. And look at that again. That, that was a runner that got on base by a walk. But still, so you got a runner on base unless he's trying to get that double play. To end this game here, the first game of the day. And Cleveland trying to get this one wall and uh, get another win, chasing the White Sox. And oh, he should have let that one go, I think. But two two count now. And back down again. Javier Baez preparing himself for this game, preparing for the moment. Fuck it, let's put some Javier Baez highlights out there. I love that TikTok. Love it. And oh, hopefully he's not going to be called out. He's safe. They're going to say he held back. And Jonathan Scoop is going to be going to uh, first. And the, the runner from first will advance to second. Javier Baez, this is, this is it. This is your moment right here. This is a big chance to be the hero. And Baez stepping up here against Emmanuel Class A. That, that could have been something. That could have been something. Maybe he's waiting for the right pitch here. It's one out. Runners on second and first. You're down by a run. That's a tough one. I mean, it was right down the middle. Maybe that's what he wanted. And now you're down 0-2. Avi Baez striking out. Oh, he's trying to break that bat. It ain't happening. The bat said no. You are not getting me to break. 
I got a wife and kids, baby. Look at that. Look at that. And a battle between Javier Baez and the Bat. The Bat wins this one. And Baez frustrated with the fact that he had the chance to, to tie this game up. Spencer Torkelson. Oh, baby. Torkelson. One of the guys uh, from my, the minor leagues who definitely has potential to be something so far. He's a uh, 200 average. Uh, he's got a strikeout in this game, but he's 0 for 3 today. So he's hoping to to be able to prove the, the Tigers right for drafting him and picking him and giving him a chance. Oh, why are you swinging at that? Oh, why are you swinging at that, my guy? That was way off. That could have been an 0-2 count right there. Sorry, 2-0 count. Class A might have him right here in the confidence of Torkelson. Might not help the Tigers here. I guess he was uh, deja vu from the last one. He said, oh, you put it last time over there. I, I swung for it. This time, that's the one you should have swung it right there. But it's okay. Uh, two two count right now. Runners on second and first, and that's a hit right there. No, it's an out, and Torkelson will be the last out. Class A gets the save, a little dicey, but it gets the job done. Cleveland wins this one two to one, and uh, they'll be happy with this W here. I'm happy to continue chasing first place in the AL Central. Um, there it is, Carr. Loss and Emmanuel Class A gets his 10th save of the year. Uh, this will improve, I think, Cleveland to a record like 24 or 23 wins. They're, they're doing really good here in the series, 24 and 12. Um, they're right now technically tied with the White Sox for the, the lead of the AL Central while Detroit moves two games back. And they, they win the series against the Tigers here, but they have one more game still, so they're going to try to go for the sweep tomorrow. So now we're going to look at what ne what's the next game. This is part of what I do here. To uh, Tampa and Baltimore on this one. This series is big in the center in the uh, AL East. Tampa lost last night. They are three for seven in their last ten games. Baltimore six and four. So maybe Baltimore starting to heat up a little bit. Maybe not. Eighteen and seventeen. Baltimore against twenty-one and fifteen. Tampa. So let's see what happens when these two face off against each other. Uh, Drew Rasmussen against uh, Grayson Rodriguez. Grayson started off the season really well. Right now he's kind of heated down. And why does it put Felix Bautista in the first inning? That stupid, uh, they've got a freaking glitch. And the game's 1 0 because of uh, Felix Bautista being the starter for some reason. It's a glitch that the game has. It's uh, I mean, it's a 1 1 game. Baltimore has a Tampa right now. Does Grayson step out? You keep him in. Drew Rasmussen is on the other side, and Baltimore puts it up by two. I think this is where you now I'm gonna have to put in tape because they put Bautista into the game. I'm gonna put Hernandez in. Uh, Darwin's own Hernandez heaving it in there, Drew. And uh, it's quite the name, Darwin's own. We're gonna go into this, put in uh, um, Tate. We're gonna let Tate try to see if he can get the save. We're gonna jump in. So, this is a two run game, and for the AL East right now, it's a big matchup between Tampa and Baltimore. Tampa. They started off really hot so far in the last 10 games, as you can see, three for seven, so they haven't really done much. Brandon Lowe against Dylan Tate. Dylan Tate will go for his second save of the year. Felix Bautista was supposed is supposed to be the closer, but the game keeps putting the the closer in as a starter for some teams, and I don't know why the fuck it does that. Shane McLean had fired seven innings of two hit ball in the loss. He still lost even with two hits. The Baltimore Orioles won last night. The A's lost to the Yankees. That streak is over, and what a hit! That's a hit! That's a hit! No, it's an out. Boom. It's an out right there, and that's a good way to start off this inning here. Get the first guy out. And now Wander Franco, one for two in this game. Four home runs so far, guys, in the season. This guy's on my fantasy team doing wonders for me. Where we lost four in games in a row, but we recently won one. And we're now to five and four. And now we're currently losing our game that we're in right now. But you don't give up yet. You don't give up. Keegan Aiken warming up just in case anything does go wrong. You keep him ready to go. Now Dylan Tate coming back at Wander Franco right down the the middle right there. So I'm okay. Kevin Cash wondering what the hell's going on with his Tampa Bay team. Right. 
I mean, that's not a bad score. Three to one, I guess. Your pitching is doing the job. It's just, it's not, your offense is not really showing up. And maybe that's where you fix it. Oh, Dylan Tate hitting Franco. Wander Franco is going to get to first. Curtis Mead, the young star, the young uh, prospect, is going to try to do better. And he's got to do better. That one for six is not helping him out. And this 0 for three in this game, not helping him out. A nice little big blast. We've seen this kid hit home runs before in the series. And he, oh, he got himself a, a foul ball there. Oh, there's a foul. It's Baltimore trying to win here, trying to improve their. Oh, said that have been, uh, I guess he stopped it technically, but it went foul. So it's a one, two count. Dylan Tate trying to go for the strikeout here. Not going to make a uh, Curtis Mead bite for that one. You don't want to put another runner on second. It'll be a tough situation. And oh, that's a hit. That's a hit. It's going to land. It's going to land in that bloop. It's going to bloop there. And uh, you got a runner on. Oh, dropping the ball. You better be quicker than that. My God, there's a runner on second. He should have stole it. And Baltimore right now. Uh, Luke Rayleigh will step up to be the pinch runner for Meade. He still got Wander Franco on second. It's a two-run game, though. Christian Betancourt, who is struggling 0 for 3. 0 for 3 right now in this game. I think he's doing a lot worse in the season. And I hit right there to foul. And the strikeout in the series, he's 0 for 7. I don't know. There's a couple guys here that are struggling on uh, offense, like Jose Siri. Is doing really bad, and I've been keeping him on because I like his fielding for the team, but he's been struggling. And uh, Christian Bentecourt is another guy that I'm, I've seen that he has struggled as well, too. So i got to see what, what can be done for Tampa Bay. Uh, maybe bring in uh, a catcher, maybe bring somebody in. Bam. One-two count right here. Two to three, and Luke Rayleigh gets the third, and Christian Benincourt gets a single on that one and an RBI. Much needed for him and his uh his compadres here. As now Keegan Aiken will step up here uh, for Dylan Tate. It's 11 games, a record of 1-0, 12 innings pitched so far. A good ERA, and strikeouts are 7-3 to three on, on walks. So now you just need two outs here. A double play can still save you. Josh Lowe, though, is 0 for 3 in the game, so maybe he's due. See, so this is where Felix Bautista would have come in perfectly, perfectly. But for some reason, it keeps putting the closer in as the first guy. So, I don't know. I'm not I'm not a fan of that. And right now... Everything Grayson Rodriguez did is, is looking like it could be removed. And, oh, a bunt. That will definitely bring in the guy from third. And then it's going to keep the runner on first. And nobody is out. Just a, a good play by Tampa. Tampa now back. It's a 3-3 game here. And look at this. The show drone shows he was way there before, before it could even be gotten. And that right there is a tie game. Jose Siri now. Stepping up, the average is way below 100. It's below 100 right now. Has not really been doing so well this year. He's got a hit in this game, but uh, if he could get another one here, could change a lot of things. He's been on the team for his fielding. He is the last. He is the number nine hitter for a reason. And oh, I could have been. could have been a ball, but who knows? But with the runners in scoring position, look at his average. It's, it's a point two zero eight. I guess this is the only time he likes to hit. 3-3 three, three right now. Tampa Bay has come back with two runs in the ninth on Baltimore. A uh, curveball there. Nothing at all. The series will be out as long as ODS can get it. He got it. And now you got two outs with the runner on second and first. Tampa Bay, who's who's your leadoff? I think it's Randy Arosarena, isn't it? Isn't that their leadoff? 
I also have one. And just needs to hold it down here. One more batter. And Aros Arena will go right to center field. And that's a big one. That's, that's why he's clutch. That's why he's dangerous. And that's why Tampa Bay has just taken the lead. Five to three. Aros Arena with a two-run double. And the Rays are having at it here in the ninth. The bats are waking up here. And Aros Arena got a big time hit there. And the Rays take the lead. Frustrating situation, but Emmanuel Margot is uh, up there now. Keegan Aiken has to hold it down now and shut down uh, Tampa Bay, who's heating up. It's a tough one. It's a tough game for uh, for Oriole fans, but they still have the bottom of the ninth to see if they can come back. Two balls and one strike. And Margot. That's a nice little hit. Damage has been done by Tampa Bay. And uh, Adley, uh, Adley Rutschman, uh, Ramon Urias, and Gunnar Henderson will be the next uh, three up four. The Orioles, but Jason Adam coming in for his 10th save of the year. He's played 14 games, an ERA of 2.45, strikeouts 15 to 2, and Isaac Pardis is going to part of this is going to be the first baseman. Adley uh, Paredes, Paredes, Pardis, Paredes, Paredes, one Paredes. Is it going to be Adley Rutsch, uh, Rutschman? Holy fuck, these names. Are gonna... Ali Rutschman is uh, trying to get on base. He's 0 for 3 in this game against Jason Adam. As Tampa's trying to even out the series here 1 1 with Baltimore. Baltimore had the lead. They had a chance. They had a chance to, to win this game. And uh, fortunately for them, the bullpen didn't show up the way it should. But. It's time for Jason Adam to try to get this close here. And I hit there? No, nothing there at all. It's a 1 2, it's a foul ball. Jason Adam might be going for that strikeout right here. And there it is. He got him. He got him. I called it before it even happened. Got him right before anything like that happened. And uh, that's the first out right there of the inning. Ramon Urias now is going to have to come up here. He's six for, he got six home runs at 20 r one RBIs this year. He's 0 for 2 today, but this is his moment to come up and shine. No Tampa Bay's lead is definitely dwindling down in the east, so they love to get the win here. And Jason Adam is getting closer to that. Getting closer to giving that uh, that win to them. He was hoping he chased that one. He didn't chase it. And top up, pop up right there. And to court says, I got you guys. I got y'all. One more out here. Gunnar Henderson, two home runs, 10 RBIs this year, 274 average. He's got a single in this game right now. Needs a single here or anything that that can be productive to keep the game alive. Because if not, you become an out and you become the end of the game. Jason Adam has been good about not giving up many walks this year. Only two so far. So definitely not. Okay, maybe I jinxed him. Maybe he's about to give a walk. It's 2-0 count now on Gunnar Henderson. 
still a two-run game. I say you still pitch and you go for it, man. Another one. You got Austin Hayes, who's got two home runs and three RBIs. This guy's been the reason the Baltimore Orioles are in the game. You don't want to give him another chance. Go right down there. There, oh, you're gonna, and that's a walk. I jinxed it. I jinxed Adam on that one. But now you're gonna bring in Austin Hayes, who's having a, a nice little day today. Two home runs, three RBIs so far in the season. Eight home runs, 22 RBIs. Uh, not what you want to see. This guy's been owning you guys today. Jason Adams gonna have to be very careful here. It's a two-run game. This guy's got something in the back. Hasn't thrown a strike in five pitches, five pitch, uh, five straight balls, six straight balls right now by Jason Adam. And then maybe this is what the Orioles want, a chance for them to make them come back, that comeback right here. Six straight balls right here by Jason Adam. That's seven straight ones. One more, and it's another walk right there. Maybe you walk him, get to Jorge Mateo, and let Mateo beat you guys. And Adam, right there, there it is, breaking the, the cycle of wall, uh, balls. And it's a 3-1 count now. And that's a, that's a ball, but Austin Hayes, I guess, like a ball. Going back to first, not letting Hunt, uh, Henderson get, get anything going on. 3-2 count here, two out. Uh, a big hit gets you run. And a big hit. That one definitely gets you on into the game. Unless you know, you're going to don't test. Don't test out Rosarena. Don't test him. But hey, they're not because they were by the time Rosarena got the ball. And Austin Hayes gets another RBI. This man is carrying the Orioles. Tonight. He is carrying them four RBIs for, for Hayes today. And the Orioles are only down a run now. Ryan McKenna will come in to pinch run. Uh, I don't like that, but hey. You're trying to just get to extra innings now. Or him, Mateo, one for three in the game. Jason Adam trying to avoid losing this one. And what a pop that one is. And we're going to for sure get extra innings. For sure we're getting extra innings as Baltimore found a way to get back into it. The bullpens of both teams uh, not doing the job for them. Not doing the job. And look at this pop right there. Bloop. Got him. Got him. He's like, I got that one. That's easy for me. Easy money. As now Taj Bradley, who we've been having come out the bullpen, not giving him a start yet, but how he is, uh, how he does so far. He's had five walks so far this season, so uh, it's probably for the better for us to just see how he does in the bullpen, and then we'll put him out as a starter if he does better than what he's doing now. But Taj Bradley has the game right now. Cedric Mullins, 0 for 4 in the game. Bradley, the highly proud. There's a steal coming through, and it's gets it. It's good. Mateo says, I got a steal, baby. I'm here. He's like, get me, get me around. All you need is a hit. Get this rookie out. This rookie doesn't know what he's doing against you, Cedric Mullins. Cedric Mullins, a beast against uh, a beast here on the show. It's become meme worthy. Ten stolen bases for Jorge Mateo this year. A good percentage of stealing. Todd Bradley has to watch out. And oh, two one count, two one count. The rookie put into a big situation here. And I guess that's what Kevin Cash wants to test him here in the bullpen. And that's a that's a nice out right there. A nice out. That's an out right there. We're going to extra innings between uh, Tampa Bay and Baltimore. Baltimore had the... Uh, check this out. Baltimore had the lead in the top of the ninth. They lost it. Tampa Bay had the, the lead as well by two runs. So they lost it. And now we're here. In, uh, in extra innings, as Ryan McKenna will be in left field for Austin Hayes. And it's going to be Yandy Diaz stepping up against Keegan Aiken. They're keeping Aiken in the game. That's an interesting strategy by Baltimore, I guess. But you got a runner on second now. Nice fastball. We're sticking with this game the whole game. I think it's 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 got that ability unless Tampa Bay opens up a can of whoop ass here. Kyle Bradish and Tyler Wells are in the bullpen warming up, getting ready. We could be seeing them join this game very soon. Uh, 
Back up top right there. 0-2. Oh, I think maybe Keegan Aiken is finding it now in this inning here. Especially with the pressure on him right behind him in that second baseman. Uh, the man in second. And look at that right there. It's Yandy Diaz lying right to the first baseman. Mount Castle got him. These fans in attendance are getting something worth it. It's Brandon Lowe is 0 for 4 in this game. Uh, in the series, he's 1 for 6. So I think he's due. I think he's due for something here. If I'm, the, if I'm Tampa Bay right now, I'm preparing. System. Start running. 1 0. Brandon Lowe's got a, three, a 0 0.324 average with runners in scoring position. So he likes this situation. Aiken got himself a ball right now. Got himself another. There it is. 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one count. This is only the second game we're, uh, we're doing so far. And I hit right down the middle. I told you Brandon Lowe loves that situation. Loves to be put in that spot. Runner will score from second to home. Tampa Bay has taken the lead. That man loves that spot. He loves that spot and that spotlight right there. And Brandon Lowe delivers yet again. I don't know why Aiken's still in the game, but I think that's it for him. Yep, and it's uh, Brian Baker coming in on ERA of 5.28. 15 innings so far this year. I hope that he holds it down. He only got a runner on first. Wander Franco is on base. Last time he was on base, he got hit. So let's see what happens here. We still got a whole bunch of more games to go. We're already almost in the 30-minute mark of this video. Again, I treat these like streams. I go as long as they go. And it's just a fun little thing to have there. And Wander Franco, back to him again. Let's see what you got, my guy. Let's see. Let's see what you get. Put him on the side. Swoop. Nothing there at all. 1-1. One, one. It's a 1-1 one, one count here. Baltimore. Uh... Again, this has been the story of the game. They they had the game. They had the, the lead in the ninth. Brought in uh, Givens. Batista couldn't come in because of a glitch in the game that puts the closer in as the starter. Uh, oh, putting it down right there. 2-2 two, two count. Um, so that's what happened there. Batista couldn't come in to close the game. Um, so Givens came in. Givens started getting the people on base, and that's when it was enough of him. Uh, Aiken came in, and then uh, that's a strikeout there. That's the second out right there. Big strikeout there for Brian Baker getting Wander Franco. So then... In the ninth, it was a two-run game. All Baltimore's Baltimore's to lose, which is pretty much what happened. They lost the lead, and uh, Tampa Bay came back with a big two-run hit. Uh, a two-run, yeah, two-run double by uh, Randy Arosarena. And then uh, Baltimore was trailing by two um, after, the, after those situations here and there. Um, and then Baltimore came back in the ninth. Baltimore came back in the ninth, and this is the situation we're in. And And a big hit there. Ooh. That's part of this is uh, Isaac. Part of this is trying to get himself on base here. Guy really wanted to pick up on my fantasy baseball teams, but I never knew I should have or shouldn't. But we'll see what he could do here. He's got a 233 average so far this year. Strike two here. Got two outs. You're still trailing by one. You want to hold the, and limit the damage that Tampa Bay can do. A one run still keeps you in the game very close. And back at him again. Who? It's Brian Baker trying to hold it through here for his squad. Three, two, full count now. Christian Bentecourt on deck. He got an art himself. One of the RBIs was him. He's been having a stressful year for himself but he at least got one of the runs to help them get this game and now you got runners on second and first thanks to that walk and christian bentoncourt has a single and rbi this game this game uh it's been tough for him this year he's uh, only had three rbis this year he's batting under 200 it's not been a good year for him but he's hoping that that could be uh, something he builds off of and if he can get another rbi here maybe another a double here uh, it will maybe help him out and help his confidence out even more now. You got a runner on second and first. Back up top. That's a ball. Pow! 
Oh, that's a big boy. That's good. Oh, that's Christian Bentoncourt has woken up his bat in this game, and Tampa Bay is up eight to five. Christian Bentoncourt has only had three, two RBIs before this game. He only had two RBIs the whole year. He now has three in this game. That's what they needed. That's what Tampa has been needing. This guy to step up, and he has done just that here tonight for his squad. And Brian Baker has lost control of this game here. And Baltimore now is in trouble here of this game getting away. It's Josh Lowe now uh, one for four in this game, but a runner on second. There's two outs, though. I mean, I could just go to simulate and we go from there. Um, but and probably what I will do right now, I'll probably go to simulate after this here. If this is not a strike. Oh, I hit down the middle. And this could definitely get the runner, Benton, or maybe from second to home. And it's going to get it. Tampa Bay is up by four. Tampa Bay has opened up the, uh, the can and said it's all on the floor now. You got to all pick it up because we're not picking it up. As uh, Joey Crebell will come into the game, we're going to go into a team select. We're going to go here. Not We're going to quick manage here. We're going to fast forward this simulate. Nine to five. Okay, here we go. It looks like we're going to fast forward this here to the next at bat. And there's an out already there. That's another out. Anthony Santander, who's been phenomenal this year, Uh is going to be out to the race have beat the Orioles nine to five, and uh, what a game this was! Uh, first the Orioles led, then Tampa Bay led, then it became extra innings, and then one run by Tampa, and then Tampa just exploded with Benson Court, and then Lowe got himself an RBI. Big game for Tampa. They needed this one. Uh, they've been struggling for the last ten games. Uh, the Orioles back to uh, another loss. They've been kind of a, a five hundred team so far, so they're missing something. All right, Christian Bentecourt. You see, that's three RBIs, the most he's had all year. He's had in this one game. He had more than he's had all year. So maybe it's a turning point for Christian Bentecourt. Uh, Taj Bradley gets the win. Keegan Aiken gets the loss. I'm going to take a look at Tampa, uh, Baltimore right now because um, Aiken and Aiken probably will stay. I mean, three earned runs, but I don't know. Aiken might go away. I'm going to take a look at what Baltimore has. I do real quick. I, I didn't like that performance by uh, where is he at? Not Aiken. Is he at? Is he here? Brian Baker's a 72. But he has a 6.32 ERA. I mean, it did. It was not a great performance there. He kind of blew it. But, I mean, who do you put into that spot? Darwinzo. I mean, I guess I'm going to let him roll for it. But I didn't like that performance by him. I didn't. And Batista did. He got. He played. But if he gets a game. Now, see, he started the game for them. It's really weird, but okay, we're already 30 minutes into this video. We've only done two games. Shit. I mean, that was a that was a that was a good game though. I like that one between Tampa and Baltimore. I got away from uh, from from Baltimore, but still. All right, the next game I had was a 6:35 Pittsburgh and Colorado. Uh, Colorado is a 20, 14 and 22 team, while Pittsburgh is at 500 team. They lost last night to Pittsburgh one to two, so maybe the bats will come out here tonight. Gomber against Keller. It's already, it's, Pittsburgh's already up 2-0, 3-0 here. Gomber trying to keep him in. I think that's it for, uh, Keller's keeping a shutout right now. But he's not going to, he's not going to, he's not going to keep it. He's not going to be able to last anymore. We're not going to put him there. We're going to try to do a complete game of the shutout. That's a 1-3. Okay, never mind. The shutout's gone. Chase a young. It's 1-3 one, three now, 1-3 one, three game. We're going to let Bernard uh, take care of this one, and he'll do just that. He takes care of it. It's a 3-1 game. The Pirates beat the Rockies. Mitch Keller, player of the game, six strikeouts, three walks. We took him out because he was getting tired, so we're not going to keep him there. Pittsburgh with a chance to sweep the Rockies tomorrow. The Rockies, come on, y'all. y'all. I, I don't know what to do with the Rockies. Their pitching is, is, is a question. Uh, it's a question mark. Their batting was also kind of, they couldn't even get runs into it. They got 11 hits, still couldn't get a run in from that. Come on. 
All right, next one is the 640 game. I saw a 640 game. I saw a couple here. All right, Toronto, Philadelphia. Philly and Toronto. Here it is. 19-16 Philly against Toronto is 20-15. It's only a two-game series here. Uh, they both had the day off yesterday, so this should make their teams uh, a little better at this one here. So let's see what happens here. 0-0 zero, zero here. What a good start for both teams. And there's Philly getting three runs on uh, Alex Manoa. And I know he got DFA'd or he got sent down. I'm not sure which one it was. I have to take a look again. And there's 2-3 there. Nola's going to keep going, and we're going to let him go to the 6, and that's it. We're going to call in the bullpen. We're going to let in Matt Stram. The Nola's down here. It's a two-run game. And there's Philly doing what they needed to do. It's exactly what they needed to do. I'm going to put it uh, Craig Krimble. Craig Kimbrell, and hope that he can hold it down. And he allowed two runs, but Philly will still win the game. 6-4. to four, The Phillies beat Toronto here. Trey Turner got a home run and three RBIs. Uh, so definitely a hero here, but Kimbrell almost lost us the game. Almost lost Philly the game here. Uh, so 20 and 16, both teams have the same record now. Toronto didn't want to lose that game. Now they're going to fall behind um, Tampa Bay, but it's it's barely made. There's a lot of time still for that matchup, especially since they are actually a team that wins games. Um, so let's take a look at the next 640 games: Cincinnati and the Mets. Uh, they haven't played. They're going to play three games here. They had the day off yesterday. Uh, since he did, and so did uh, New York. So let's see what happens here as they're playing in Cincinnati. Hunter Green, the prospect, has not been having a good year against Max Scherzer here. I know he could be, he's going to be something special, but so far it's not been great for him. So 0 0, 0 0. Okay, he's there's a 1 0, 3 0. Ooh. We're going to change Hunter Green's time. I mean, better than he's had other, other games. Alex Young in the game now. They only allow one. So 4-0 game. Scherzer is shutting down this, this team right here in Cincinnati. 7-0. 7-1. Joey Canal is probably going to be done soon. And uh, Scherzer still in the game. But they're going to put David Robertson in to get this one. Uh, and the Mets win 7-1. And how are you going to lose when Pete Alonso gets you four RBIs and he's four for five? God damn, New York, they capitalize on their hits. That's the difference between them and Colorado. And the Mets will start this series off with the win. Hunter Green gets his fifth loss of the year. Cincinnati moves to 16-20. and 20. Max Scherzer is now 4-2 and two for the year. All right, let's take out the next one. I got a 720 is the next one I see. 705, I got a 705. 705, we're going to the Mets uh, counterpart, the Yankees. The Yankees and the A's. It's a three game series. The A's are 7 29, while New York is 19 and 17. New York is very happy that they get the A's right now at this time. They need games to win. Uh, I wouldn't say the A's are an automatic win, but it's almost there. It's Garrett Cole takes on Paul Blackburn. And Oakland started off well. They've had five hits so far, Oakland, but there's New York already getting two runs. Well, Blackburn's going to have to hold into as long as he can, and there's a 4 0 game, and that's. James Kaplan is in the game now for the A's. Garrett Cole still pitching a shutout, so you keep him in the game. 10-0. What an opening right there. It's an opening right there. And unfortunately for the A's, they get shut out. I'm pretty sure they've been shut out again and again and again. And the Yankees win this one. Garrett Cole, eight strikeouts, no earned runs, seven hits allowed. But he shuts down the, the A's here. And they're going to try to go for the sweep tomorrow while New York gets their 20th win, 20-17. Oakland gets their 30th loss of the year. And uh, Charles Tavar will go up against Luis Severiano. And Tavar, a guy that we got from the uh, free agency market. Uh, so he had a good first outing. We'll see how he does in the second game against Luis Serviano. All right, let's go to the next game. I got a 720 game. I see 720. Yep, I got one 720 game. Boston and Atlanta. Boston has been a disappointment this year. They're 11 and 25. We just fired their uh, hitting coach and pitching coach. So we'll see what happens here when Boston takes on Atlanta. It helped out the Cubs when we did that, so maybe it can help out them. But Tanner uh, Houck has been 0 for 5 this year, and he is struggling. 3-0 already. 5-0. Fried is uh, holding it down. So 1-5 right there. He's uh, Nick Pavetta in the game. 7-1.
I'll let Fried be out there. He's getting eight innings pitch. I could let him go for the full game. Fuck it. We're going to let him go for the full game. Max Fried gets himself a complete game against the uh, Red Sox. 7-1. to one. Ozzie Albus, a home run, two RBIs. Boston is in a state of disarray right now. Uh, Tanner Hawk. It, Tanner Hawk has just been, he's been bad. He's been bad. Maybe someone that we are going to get out of the pitching rotation of, of Boston here. Um, I mean, I mean, if we take him out, who do we bring up? That's the question. Starting pitcher. I mean, you could put anybody else, I guess. Nick Pavetta could be a, he's been okay this year. Cutter Crawford, he's been doing well. Okay, he's in the 40 man. He's in the 40 man, yep. So we're going to send Tanner Hollick, who is, I know, an 83 for our team. Maybe we trade him or do something else. We're going to give him a chance just to, to I mean, I don't want to trade him, but he's been struggling. He's been struggling big time. I'm going to send him down to the minors. And, uh, I mean, how many times have we sent him down? Never? Okay, we're going to send him down. He needs to, we need to find something within himself because it's not, that 0-6 is not pretty. It's not pretty. We're going to let this one be, uh. Cutter Crawford's spot. All right, Crawford. I mean, he's been doing well on the. In, he hasn't done well in the majors, but he's done well in the minors. So we'll see how he does there. Give him a chance, or maybe we put in Pavetta in because Pavetta's been proving that he could do it. We'll put Pavetta in there. Nick Pavetta will be the second guy. Okay, that's what we'll do for Boston. Little changes so far within the year as the year goes by. I know, but we'll see how Tanner Hawk does. Uh, Tanner Hawk. As Tanner, how, how does Tanner do in the, the minors? These names are the death of me. Okay, 9 to 4, 945, 740. Got a couple 740 games, so we're going to have a lot of 740 games. So we're going to jump into this. I know we haven't jumped into gameplay since the Tampa Bay and Baltimore game, but 7 1 is not a close game. Chicago and, uh, and St. Louis in this one here. Uh, I think St. Louis lost the last game. Yeah, Chicago won their last game. And the Cubs uh, are very happy right now. They're they're close to getting back to 500. At one point early in the season, they looked like they were going to be a bad team the whole year. But let's see what happens when they take on the Justin Steele goes on the mound for them against uh, against Mike Mikolas, and that's a 2-2 game right now. Mikolas, it's a 2-2 game. 2-3. Chicago is going to let Justin Steele do one more inning. Mikolas is still out there, but that's it for Steele. We're going to let uh, Azale come in. Hopefully, ah, I was hoping he could keep this. And there it is. That's what I'm talking about. Drew Smiley's been bad this year, but give him a, a chance. 7-3. to three. It's a four-run game. We're going to let Boxberger get in this one. And Boxberger, 3-7. to seven. The Cubs beat the Cardinals, 7-3. to three. Patrick Wisdom, a home run and three RBIs. And they're one game away from getting back to 500. So this is where the Cubs want to be, and now St. Louis, who was once the lead of the Central, now tied with the Pirates and the Brewers. The Brewers somehow are up there now. The Brewers are 8-2 in the last 10 games, but still, and the Cubs are only one game behind first place. The NL Central is definitely going to be a mess, but even the Reds aren't out of that neither. So every team is alive there. Okay, let's see what happens here as the next game we go is San Diego and uh, Minnesota. Minnesota has need, need he needs a win. They need a win. They feel like they need a win. 17-18. San Diego's 21 and 14. It's the start of their series here. As Minnesota makes their way down to this. Just yeah, they're I mean they're gonna be in SoCal for the next couple. Uh, next week they're gonna be in SoCal with the Angels and uh, Dodgers. But right now they're gonna be here at home. Huh? Messi's going to uh, to enter Miami. Interesting. Good for him. And here we go. It's 3 0. San Diego's already up here. Jorian, who's been solid this year, I guess a bad start for him. Joe Musgrove. Oh, that was a, that's Minnesota getting on Musgrove right there. I think that's it for Joe. I think we should be done with it. Oh, no. 5 4. We should, yeah, we should take him out of the last one. My bad. That was my bad. Chris Paddock can hold an inning. And there's a 6-5 game. We're going to let in uh, Duran, and we're going to step into this game here. It's a one-run game in the ninth here in Minnesota at Target Field. At Target Field. 
as Minnesota is trying to get back to 500 against uh, the game, uh, the NL West leaders of San Diego, Jose Azucar, who we've seen before come in and done some good things here. Uh, Going to take on Johan Duran. And up top, 103 mile per hour fastball. Asokar is ready. And that's a poo. That's kind of a questionable one, but we'll take we'll we'll let it go. It's a questionable call there. If it was a strike or not, it looked like it was a ball. But I'm um, called it a strike, and that's a lineup right. That's a that's a pop-up right there, and that's an easy one right there. And the twins get their first out there. Larnich has been coming in here again the twins have had some injuries on the outfield um so they've definitely had to bring uh the, the backups uh the, the substitutes to step up here uh ha Seong kim 0 for 3 in the game but it means he's due baby <sighs> slowed it down for them a lot right there with 83 mile per hour and duran's been very good i, I like him as a closer duran's uh, done a good job they're keeping it together for the Twins, hoping to keep this game here for them. And back down below, sped it up a little bit at 94 miles per hour there. I'm trying to keep Kim off of, his, off of his feet, not knowing what's about to come up for him. 101 miles per hour. You're out here starting it with an 80, then a 90, and then 101 miles per hour. But it's a 2-1 count right now. <sighs> Drew another 101 at him, but that was a ball right there. And it's a 3-1 count. Austin Ola on deck. They do have Gary Sanchez. They do have Gary Sanchez, which I might step in and uh, put Gary Sanchez on. As Kim couldn't get to that 99 per hour mile, uh, 99 mile per hour fastball. It's a 3-2 count now. Duran. Ooh, pop up right there behind the catcher. I think I'm going to bring in Gary Sanchez for the Padres and see if that helps them out. I'm going to jump into them right now. I'm going to do it. Austin Ola has been struggling this year, so we're going to do a, we're going to do a manager. We're going to substitute uh, Gary Sanchez into the game. Former twin. If I remember that correct, he's a former twin. As Gary Sanchez hasn't. Uh, look at that. As Gary Sanchez is ready here. Warming up, stretching up. Ready against his former team, Duran, against Sanchez. Here it is, one run game and only one out left. Sanchez, a little too eager, and he will be out there, and the Twins will get this win against the Padres. I mean, I mean, Gary Sanchez is the the catcher now. He's he's done a good job for the Padres since he's been called up. I mean, uh, Carlos Correa will get the player of the game, a double and two RBIs. Chris Paddock gets a win. Robert Suarez gets the loss. Duran gets his eighth save of the year. So the Twins get a win, a much-needed win. They need it back to 500, um, where now they hope to build off of that. San Diego, the NL West leaders, better hope the Dodgers don't win. But you got two more games against them. Kenta Maeda and Sonny Gray are going to be the next challengers for them. So it could be a tough one for San Diego here. All right, I have another 740 game here in Kansas City, who pulled the uh, the shocker last night and beat the best team in the majors. Uh, well, now the Guardians are up there, too, because they have a 24-12 uh, and 12 record. But let's see if Zach Granke can do that against Lance Lynn here. Knights a four-game series, so it's still a lot of games left in the series here. And they could all turn around on Kansas City here. Since Kansas got Kansas City, I think I saw Chapman start the game. I swear to God, I thought I saw him start the game. And there it is. Let me see. Pitching change. I'm not changing the pitcher. Yeah, see, they started the close. They started Chapman in this game, too. It's a 0-0 game right now, Steel. 2-0 Chicago now on Granke there. Granky, that's probably it for him. We're going to let in uh, Garrett come in. Amir Garrett did well, but he's getting tired. It's a 4-2 game. Ah, come on, Dylan Coleman. 4-2. 5-2. It's a, it's a three-run game. Lance Lynn was injured. It's took out a few days. I don't know why I started Chapman. I, I really hate that it starts off the closer like that, but the White Sox are going to win. doesn't even matter, but... They they win five to two. A home run from Luis Roberto with two RBIs gets on the player of the game. I do want to look at the box score. 
and Slane. Look at all the pitching changes they made. See, it doesn't say that Chapman got the start, but he did. He did get the start, but hey, whatever. Uh, Kansas City wins this, uh, loses this one, sorry, to Chicago. And they move to 14 and 23. Chicago now moves to 25 and 12. Still the best record in the league here on the show. Go figure. In real life, it's nothing like that. Uh, 940, 740. Now LA, the Dodgers, and Milwaukee. Milwaukee has been 8-2. Uh, and 8-2 and two since their, uh, I think it was their matchup with the Angels. So they've been doing really well. Let's go here. Uh, yeah, look at that. They, they've been 8-2 and two since their matchup against the Angels. Uh, now the Dodgers, they won last night 8-1, to one, but they're going to be taking on Urias here tonight. So let's see what happens here as uh, Jose Urias. Oh, sorry, Julio. Julio, not Jose. I'm thinking of the Urias. The um, Julio against Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns has not lost a game yet this year. And neither did Kershaw last night, but it, things change real quick as the Dodgers are up 1-0 here. 5 0. They got to him in that in that uh in that one right there. They're gonna let Corbin come out. Ooh. Seven to one. I think they should yeah, we should have made the change. But last night they had a lot of uh, bullpen moves. Aaron Ashby, it's eight to one. The Dodgers are telling him, we're just paying you back for yesterday. Eight to one. Matt Bush, nine to one. The Dodgers are gonna return the favor to the Brewers for last night. And the Dodgers win this nine to one. JD Martinez with the home run and RBI. Urias gets the win. Corbin Burns gets his first loss. The Dodgers move to 20 and 17. This will put the the Brewers now a half a game behind in the first place. In the in that they were in first place. Now they're half a game, and the Dodgers are going to be a half one and a half games. Uh, one and a half. Yeah, the other one's half. This is one and a half. Come on. And the Dodgers now move by one and a half games behind the Padres now for first place in the uh, NL West. All right. So let's take a look at the next games. They're gonna do the rubber matchup tomorrow with Gonsling against Woodruff. So let's see what happens here. The next game I have is an 840 game. I see 840. Yep, 840. We're going to go to Arizona here, who I, I don't get it. They have a, they've been struggling. They lost last night 12-1 to to Miami. So let's see if Gallant can finally figure it out here in May. It's 2-0. Arizona's up right now. It's 1-2. I think that's it. I think we'd let Gallon out. No, we're going to keep him in there. Trevor Rogers on the other side doing real well, too. Uh, there it is. We, we're going to go uh, bullpen, bullpen, or uh, we're going to let him out. We're going to we're gonna get him out. Miguel Castro stepping in, keeping it in. It's a one-run game here. And now we're going to let the bullpen come in and, uh, and keep it here. All right, here we go. It's a one-run game. Arizona's up right now by one run here. In, uh, and we're going to go see what happens here with the Diamondbacks here against the Marlins. Luis Arez, this guy's been hitting ungodly in real life. But in the game, he's 265. Still not bad, but in, in real life, he's been doing some crazy stuff. And now the Marlins and the Diamondbacks. Here we go. Joe Maniply coming in for the save. It's a ball right there, and we've seen some some bullpen issues before from Arizona in these videos. Uh, we did uh, send down Mark Melanson to to the minors. He was somebody who was giving up those issues, and now uh, right there, first out. The crowd here in Arizona hoping for two more of those and hoping that this could be the start of them turning their season around. Jazz Chisenholm is two for six in the series with the in the in the series against the Diamondbacks, one for three today. Let's see what Jazz can do. Okay, there we go. There you go. There goes Kansas City. And Jazz is like, okay. I don't think that was one, but okay. Let's back to it again here. That's that's a ball. That's a ball. That's really low. So this is a, if you can get this out right here, you definitely take a lot of the momentum and you take a lot of the fight out of Miami here. It's a one run game, man. Your crowd wants to see you win. And that's a hit. No, it's a foul ball. It's a foul ball. Then that's a 2-2 two -two count. You have it where you want it here, but I feel like he's going to go to a full count here. Oh, foul ball again. Jazz is fighting for his life. He's fighting for his life, man. 
That was the worst R. Kelly impression I ever. No, 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 don't go there. Don't go there. And a hit right there. Nice little bloop right there that will get him on base. And now the Diamondbacks are hoping uh, this isn't the beginning of a comeback for Miami. Jazz his in Chisholm home is excited because Messi's coming out to town. Brian De La Cruz, one for three here tonight. And you always got to be careful with Jazz because that man can steal the, those bases. And man apply right now. Well, he he gets a good eye. Look at the way he pitches lefty. He gets a good uh, good eye. He could see what's uh, what he's thinking. Back up top. Come on, my guy. You got to do better than that. We're almost an hour into this video. Cool. Runner Jazz is stealing. Jazz is going to be there. He's in. Safe. And without a doubt. Even the ump's like, come on, dude. You know this. The seventh uh, stolen base of the year. Now with the runner in scoring position, any hit here definitely is troubling for Arizona here. Any hit to the outfield is definitely trouble. There it is, that first strike there. Brian uh, De La Cruz getting uh, Manapai a little worried, but the Diamondbacks are like, okay, like we got to just cool down. And again, another ball, 3-1 count. Joey Wendell preparing himself, getting himself ready for this matchup. Hoping that he can get the better of, of Manaply. That's Dela Cruz here. Nope. Walking him. That's not a that's not good. And the bullpen troubles continue for Arizona here. Joey Wendell coming up now. A guy that can definitely deliver a big hit if needed. Uh, and that's what Miami needs right now. Jazz is gonna make it. If you can get it out to the outfield, Jazz can make it. Oh, he stops it, but it's not enough to get a Wendell out. Bases are loaded now. One out. And that's going to be a base hit nonetheless. And Miami, the Marlins are threatening right now with the bases loaded. Here comes John, Gene Segura, who is not having a great season, but he's got RBIs, 10 RBIs, but not having a great season, batting under a, uh, under 1.89, 189, yeah. Definitely not having a uh, a great year. So we'll see what happens. This is a time to change it all up right here. Joe Manaply out here trying to hold it down. A double play gets you a win, Arizona. But a even a and you gotta. It's a lot. It's a lot going on here. I'm I'm just super excited. I'm talking everywhere. It's one one count. A double play gets you the win, Arizona. But if Miami gets any hit onto the outfield, you can expect Jazz to run it. And Jazz will make it. And then this game will be definitely uh, definitely out of, the, out of the reach of winning. Not out of the reach of winning, sorry. Out of the definite sure thing that you won the game. And that's going to be... Oh, it's going to be a hit! It's going to be a hit! And that for sure will bring two runners in. For sure. And Miami has taken the lead. And Joe Maniply is now the next victim of the Arizona of the Arizona curse in the bullpen here. Zach Gallon had a very good game here, only allowing one run, and unfortunately for him, he will be having no decision here, but here comes uh, Austin Adams uh, to try to to salvage this and not let this get out of hand. It's a one it's only one out so far. Got a runner on third. Nick Fortez is up to bat. Arizona, this really got away from them now. And Fortez it's going to be enough to possibly maybe bring him in. They're going to go for it. Arizona. They got it standing up too. Joey Wendell standing up on that one. 4-2. Miami has definitely come back here. And Jorge Solar, who's 0-2 for 2 in the game, has 8 home runs, 23 RBIs. Definitely a, a danger here. I'm not a... I'm surprised. I'm not. I'm, I mean, I thought Arizona's bullpen troubles have ended. That the closer would be able to get the job done. I mean, Andrew Chafin will probably now be the main closer now. I've been trying to figure out with Tony Manaply and, and Chafin, but we'll see. I've been doing this for an hour. I'm a little hungry. 
as now Miami has a lead here. And Jorge, so that looked like it could have been gone. That would have put the game out at 6-2. 4-2 game. We're still sticking with this game. We've seen it already happen before where a team had a lead and then they lost it. And then the ninth inning happened. We saw that between Baltimore and, and uh, Tampa Bay. That's Jorge Solar right now at a 2-2 two, two count. And striking out there. And that's the out the Diamondbacks needed a long time ago. But nonetheless, Miami gets three runs here. Due up is Kettle Marte, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., and Gabriel Moreno. Gabriel Moreno. Here it is. And they're going to bring in Dylan Floro, who's been solid this year. Seven for seven. But that don't mean nothing in this game. Nothing. Kettle Marte. Down below, nothing there at all. Kettle Marte now needs to step it up here and get something going. Back up top again. Lourdes Gurriel's three home runs, 16 RBIs. Coming up to Marte. If he can get on base here, Floro might get that job done for him. I'll put him in the back up there. 3-1 count. You have to let that one go. You, it's, I mean, it's a free swing pretty much, so whatever you want to do with it. And another strike, 3-2. I think Floro's found it now. I think Floro has found where he needs to go and what he needs to do. And back. Ooh. Two teams that are struggling. The series where one of these two teams that are struggling can step up and get better. Miami won it yesterday. Uh, and Miami's trying to get another win here. The Diamondbacks in real life, they're doing much better than this. Marte is trying to swing for the, the heavens. Who? Oh, oh, no, it did not happen. Cooper was able to get that one. That's the first out for Miami. Guriel now ready to go. It's 0 for 3 season for him right here. So he's due for something. And uh, he's going to hit that one. And first pitch swinging always leads to a strike for him there. And now it's down to the last out. Gabriel Moreno, who's uh, one for three in this game. Definitely has a lot of pressure on him to deliver right now, but it's a two-run game. I think Arizona's going to walk out of here with the loss. And I think that's what's going to happen. Miami with the comeback, a three-run comeback. Well, they were down by one run, but they got three runs in the ninth. So, hold on, I got to sneeze. <laughs> I'm telling you, after an hour... Sneezes happen. And there's a nice little strike there that gets him back into it. 2 1. And the Diamondbacks down to the last strike here. A game that looked like they could have won. A good outing from Gallon finally. He's been having kind of a rough year this year. He finally had a good outing and uh, his team couldn't hold the lead for him. So we're definitely going to have to put someone in the closer role. Ooh! Take a look at the closing role of Arizona because it's been troubling for them. Back at him again there, and he's keeping this at bat alive. And Floral right now is thinking to himself, come on, man, you got to just, just swing at something, and maybe it's now, maybe it's not, but let's see. 3-2, he almost could have hit him there. And Jairo, uh, Jairo Munoz is ready and waiting for a chance if Moreno gets on base by a walk. And he will. Moreno will be walked. And he, Flora was so close. This is not something you want to leave out for chance. Munoz is 0 for 3 today. Not been batting so well this year. But we saw Bentecourt. He got all his RBI that he had in the whole season in one game. So let's see what happens here. Strike right there. Flora might feel a little bit more comfortable and a little more confident to pitch against Munoz. 
pack up top. So, yeah, he is feeling a little bit more comfortable here and more confident against uh, Munoz, who's been struggling uh, in this game. 0 for 3. <laughs> Trying to get him to chase on that one. Munoz not going to bite on that one. Let's see if he tries to go for it again as Miami is only up by two runs. There is a runner on first. And you don't want to walk another guy, man. You don't want to do that again. Don't do that to yourself now. Don't be that team. It looks like they might. Three stray balls. Jake McCarthy is on deck. And striking him out right there. Dylan Floros thinking, oh, yeah, I got him. He's like, I got him. It's Miami will get this W. And they are going to try to sweep the Diamondbacks here. And Di the Arizona is definitely struggling, man. What's going on with this team? Dylan Floro gets the player of the game because, yeah, he came out and got it. Manaply will get the loss. Floro gets his eighth save. Uh, I'm definitely going to take a look at Arizona's uh, uh I mean, Manaply's not bad. That's the thing. He's not bad. It was just a bad outing for him. But, I mean, I, have, I we need they need a closer. In a situation like that, you need a closer. That's someone's going to get the game for you. I mean, this is their pitching rotation still. I mean, there's Zach Davies. But let's see. Let me take a look. Manaply is he's a star too. I mean he's had seven saves and three blown saves. Schaefer's had uh, one save and one blown save. I just Austin Adams hasn't had a save yet neither. I mean he is the relief pitcher. I mean we put him in there. I guess we're gonna do this. We're gonna put him there. Manaply will just be the setup guy. And we'll see what happens with Arizona there. But they're 13-23, and 23, the worst team in the NL West. What's their pitching coach looking like? Contracts pitching coach. I'm not firing the pitching coach. I'm just saying that hey, you got you to gotta be a little better than this. All right. So we're going to move on to the next one here. 945 is up there. 938. 940. So the Angels got the next game. The Angels and Houston. And a big series in the West for, for every team in this, in this one here because... The Astros, the Angels, and even the Mariners are in there, and the Rangers, too. Look at those four teams so close to each other. The Mariners are playing the Rangers right now while the Angels are playing the Astros. So this is a big one uh, early May here. So this definitely starts to give you those games here. Have the Angels, and uh, we'll put Tyler Anderson against Framber Valdez, who's 0 for 1. But he's been playing a lot most of these games. And look, it put Carlos Estevez to start the game for the Angels. What the fuck? If anyone knows why that glitch happens, let me know. 1-0 right now. 1-0 here. I don't know. Anderson's still out there. Framber's still out there. Framber's trying to shut out the Angels here in Anaheim. And it might just happen. We're going to let uh, Davison come in. It's a one-run game. Framber Valdez is trying to get a shutout against the Angels. And Shohei Altani is at bat. Framber trying to get a complete game shutout here against the Angels in Anaheim. The series, he's 0 for 6 here tonight. He's 0 for 3. Shohei, you're due. You're due. It's the Houston and the Angels here. Shohei Otani is definitely due. He is due for something here. It's Rambert trying to get the complete game shutout. He got Ryan Presley in the bullpen working in just in case... Ninety-nine pitches is Valdez here. He's going for his hundredth here. And it's a ball right there on Otani. He's done a good job against Otani. Three one count. Three home runs, seventeen RBIs is up next and Anthony Rendon. <laughs> hey, did he go for it? he went for it, obviously, yeah. Three for two. And right now, Valdez is close. At his 103rd pitch here. Close to getting Shohei out. And Shohei sweat, keeping himself alive. Make Valdez pitch as much as you can. And there's Shohei. And he's going to be out. Yes, he's out. Valdez uh, outspeeding Shohei to first there. And he's got a... 
He's got something there. They're going to keep letting him go. And this is 104th pitch against Anthony Rendon, who's got who's one for three in this game. And he's still throwing strikes, so you keep him out there. Rendon getting played. Or Rendon getting played. Pay the money to for this situation. This is the big time situation. This is where you need, your team needs that run. Your team needs something to start here. Against a guy who has clearly been dominating your team here tonight. And Valdez is trying to get a win here. And pop. Oh, that's a foul ball there. There's people in the there's people in the crowd today. They understand this is a game for first place, too. There's so much already in May. It's an early May game, but still, these games against uh, your division rivals, they matter so much. And a pop-up right there. It's gonna be a foul. Jose Atuve gets it. Why do they make that fence look bigger than Atuve is? It's messed up. And they're down to the last run here. Hunter Renfro was 0 for 2. He's got to walk um, here. It's a one-run game. It's 108 pitches for Valdez so far. And he's still throwing strikes. Still throwing a 95-mile-per-hour sinker. He's still doing pretty well. as He's trying to get himself a complete game shutout of the Angels and take first place. Um, and they still have first place, but it's it's only by half a game. They lose this game, then they lose first place. And back to a ball there, 77 mile per hour fastball. Trying to get him to chase at that one. It's a 1 2 count here. 111 pitch so far for Valdez. 112 here. And foul ball there for Renfro. I wonder if that's just, he gets him, he gets him, game's over. But if he doesn't, do you still keep him out there? If he doesn't get Renfro, do you get him out of the game? He's got 113 pitches so far. Don't want him to lose his arm. 114. Luis, Luis Rengifo is stepping up next, and he's good against lefties. He's got a good thing against lefties. That's why I put him against lefties here. And a walk right there to Renfro. Puts the runner on first base now. I mean, after about 115 pitches, it could be that he, maybe he is getting tired. But uh, Dusty Baker is going to allow his boy to stay out there for this complete game shutout. And Rengifo. Oh, that's out. That's out. That's out. That's out. And there it is. There it is. A complete game shutout. What could have almost been a home run there by Rengifo. Uh-uh. Not allowed as the Astros will take this one from the Angels. They shut the Angels out at home. Dusty Baker making the right call, letting uh, Valdez take in those uh, pitches, those innings. And there it is. The... Uh, Framber Valdez gets player of the game and a W. Tyler Anderson will get the loss. He pitched eight innings still and still did well. Levon Soto went three for three. Okay. I mean, hey. Shohei and Mike Trout didn't really do much there, but the Angels are still a winning team, and uh, so are the Astros. But the Astros will take that one, and they'll be happy with that. Now they got a, a half. Well, the Angels jump down because the Rangers. The Rangers get a win. Then you're in trouble, Houston. All right, next game we have here. I got Washington and San Francisco. And then Seattle. No Seattle. No Seattle and Texas Day. There's a Seattle and Texas game. That's why I'm like, they know there's got to be a Seattle Texas game. I don't see it though. Am I blind? There's 940. I got a 940 game and 845. So let's go to Texas and Seattle. Seattle lost the game last night against Texas. And now Haney will come up to take on um, Luis Castillo. Haney going up. 2-0. Texas already taking 2-1 there. And there's a 2-2 game. I think Castillo can go one more inning. And he does. It's a 2-2 game. That's it for Castillo. We're going to take him out. We're going to bring in uh, Diego Castillo. Oh, that good for Diego. It's a 4-2 game now. Justin Topa, 4-2. Josh Lickrock. 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 We're going to step into this game. It's a two-run game between uh, Texas and Seattle. And the West is definitely on the line here for Texas. Texas could get a win here against Seattle. They moved to 22-13. and and There will only be a, a, a half a game difference between them and Houston. Brock Burke. We've seen him so many times here. A guy who's been cold. And a guy that maybe uh, the Diamondbacks would like to get in. And he could get them the saves. All right. Teoscar Hernandez. Brock Burke here in Seattle. Seattle was starting to find their, uh, their momentum now, and now all of a sudden, Texas is trying to take that away from them. 
I only got this game and one more game. Teoscar Hernandez. Holy fuck moly. Home run. You probably would have loved to have some runners on base on that one, but it's a home run nonetheless. And now you're down by one run against Brock Burke. He still has the chance to get the save. So the save's not gone from him, but Sam Haggerty up next. Wearing the number zero here. Six for 19 this season, 316 average so far. So he's doing well in his, uh, his short appearances here that he's had for his squad. And, oh, that's going to be a pop-up, and that's going to be the first down, and that's what Texas wanted. Yeah, you might have allowed that opening home run here in the ninth, but... You've got him where you want him right now. Eugenio Suarez, who right now, it's time for you to step up, my guy. As they're taking on the 7 8. The 7 and the 8 for sure are coming up next. Um, so let's see what Brock Burke does against them. Against lefties, Suarez is not really good against lefties, and that's what Brock Burke is. He's a lefty. So definitely not good against him. And that's a fastball that will be called a strike. Suarez is in trouble here, and so are the Mariners here. The crowd trying to chant, uh, come on, we need you guys. We need this to step up. We're only down by one now. That's a ball. They're trying to get him to chase nothing there at all. After this, we go to San Francisco and Washington and see what happens between those two struggling teams. A couple struggling teams have been facing against each other. Yeah. Hello? Did my mic go up higher? I don't think it did. It says it did. You're going to strike there. A strike is a strike. And Sean Murphy about to step up. That's a strikeout there. And Tom Murphy going to come up against Brock Burke. First strike right there. Definitely a good one for uh, for Texas. Brock Burke's doing the job that they thought he would. Just forget that home run he allowed at his first at bat. Against the first guy he play, fish, faced off against. But another one there. Go, Mariners, go. And that's it. The Mariners will lose this one while the Rangers will get themselves a nice little win thanks to Brock Burke. And Brock Burke says, hey, don't worry about it. I got us. I got us, guys. I'm the guy that's going to get the saves for us. Don't worry about it. The Mariners will get this loss here. But Teoscar Hernandez got himself a nice little home run. Nice little home run. Joe uh, Barlow will get the win. Diego Castillo will get the loss. Brock Burke with his 13th save of the year. So good for him. Good for Brock. Okay, let's see what we have here now. Texas will try to get the sweep tomorrow. And now Washington and San Francisco. Washington lost last night 3-4. to four. Uh, They're going to come out here with Steven Strasburg against Logan Webb. And I think I have San Francisco... Uh, we did see an injury to Estrada, so now I did call up someone who was doing pretty well in the minors. And I think he's one of the younger players that they do have, Brett White, uh, Wisely. He did really well. He plays so many positions. He did really well in the minors, so I'm going to give him a chance. Um, so we'll see, if he comes, we'll see if he plays today. Right, let's go to the A's game. San Francisco and Washington teams are struggling. Uh, San Francisco hoping to get the better of this uh, series for themselves. And it's a 1-0, 1-1 game. I said Strasburg, maybe somebody I'm hoping to trade. I know it's a big contract, so we'll see who takes it. And right now, 3-1. Webb's keeping us together. At seventh inning, Webb's going to go out there. Josiah Gray on the other side. San Francisco's up 3-1. Webb's keeping it out there, so I'm going to let him go again. And I'm going to let the pitcher come in now. It's a three-run game. So, sorry, it's a two-run game. 
We're gonna bring in Duvall, Camino Duvall, the seven save guy right now, looking for his eight save here. Camilo's been out. He's been here and there. Joey Menace. Menace is a guy who I said may be a trade target for the Nationals. I might trade him as well. I mean, it depends on where the Nationals are. We got guys that can come up to us. We got guys that we need to see what they can bring. And the Nationals right now thinking to themselves, okay, hey, like, it's all good. It's all good. No, he didn't go for that one. It's a hundred mile per hour cutter, though, so that's a tough one not to to try to get the not to at all try to swing at all. Run down and got himself a complete game shot against the A's yesterday, and I think Garrett Cole did that too. Damn, the Yankees haven't had to use their bullpen against the A's. That's that's crazy. Trying to get him to go for that. There's nothing there, nothing at all. Doon, 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 and got him right there. And got him swinging, and that's that's what matters the most for them. Another one right there. Another swing. Another swing. Swing it. Swing, swing, swing. And that's going to be an out right there. And bam! Got him. Okay. Good job. He got him. I mean, if you're going to get people out, that's how you do it. Duvall right now is looking for one more. One more out. Get him out. One more guy. Ooh, that's the top one right there. Gilbert Reese not happy about that one, but you're two for three in this game. You're having an okay game for yourself here. You got Brett Wisely out there. Weasley, Wisely. I'm going to go Wisely because there's no Weasley in there. Brett Wisely at second. I want to see what he's done this game. San Francisco trying to get this win here. Three to one right now. Duval looking to get the the save. Ha ah, two one. We've been at this video for almost an hour and a half. God damn. God damn it. We are this has been a I mean there's been some games here. There's been some very close games in this video. The last one was a little bit shorter. There was less games, but there were none of the games where it's close. But this one we've seen some closer games here from these teams. And Ruiz. Time to step up, my guy. Striking out right there. And the Giants get themselves a W. Webb did eight innings of good work, and, and it's paid off by his uh, bullpen. Bullpen's like, we got you. We got you back. And Brett Wisely there. Got himself one for four and a double in this game. Okay. And uh, two runs scored for him. He ran in. Not two runs batted in, but he uh, ran in twice. So, so far, I think he's... I mean, that's not bad for the kid. We'll take a look at him right now. Where is he at? This is the kid here. I ate at bat so far. This is the second game that he played. And 250 average so far. Okay. I mean, hey. Uh, Wilmer Flores hasn't really been that great. And Estrada has been injured. And Estrada is out for two to three months with a dislocated shoulder. But that's it. We're done here. This almost hour and a half video is done. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.